exactly what they're going to share. I haven't seen the presentation yet. Um, but an opportunity definitely during the evening here for you to speak up, offer some comments, um, and they're going to tell you what they're doing with your tax dollars a little bit too. So I will turn it over to Mr. Paluski. Yep. No, nope. yes. I'm turn it over to uh, Captain Beverly Kelly. Very good. Captain Beverly Kelly is one of our board members, and she's going to start us off here, and she'll get uh, the program rolling, and they will introduce everybody as we go. You got it, guys. Okay. Well, welcome to the uh, Queen Anne's County Board of Education's town hall meeting. It's a public meeting that is being videotaped for the county citizens to review on QAC TV 7, which is our local cable station. Um, the agenda is available hopefully on your tables, and there's some, some up here. Yeah, he's kind of back here. Miss Wright has a agenda for us. Um, press and public comment will be taken and it's limited to three minutes. Um, not to be mean, but I just know you just want to get out of here, I'm sure. It's, a, it's just a hard school night. If you care to speak, you need to sign the roster over by Miss <coughs> Wright over there, please. During the meeting, and you can do that afterwards, because there's not too many folks here right now. During the meeting, we ask that you turn off the cell phones or pagers and hold personal conversations and comments to uh, outside the room here. Uh, we would like to now stand and give you the pleasure to lead you. So if everyone could please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I do want to welcome you all. We've had three of these um, hearings, one at Stevensville Middle on Penn Island, one at Centerville Middle, and this is our third and last one. We started this, I believe, last year or the year before um, to just to, we're in the process of we're just getting ready to begin the budget process, and we wanted to hear from the public what their concerns are, things that we might want to consider when developing um, our budget. So I'd like to turn it over to our interim superintendent, Mr. Pulowski. Thank you, Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Before I begin, I'd like to introduce uh, some key members uh, of our staff. Uh, joining me on the executive team uh, to my right is Mrs. Janet, Miss Janet Pauls, our assistant superintendent uh, for curriculum instruction. Uh, to her right, Mr. Sid Pinder, our director of operations. To his right, uh, Robin Landgraf, our chief financial officer. To her right, uh, Mr. Ed Modell is our community liaison. And to his right is Mr. Mark Farley, uh, who is our uh, director of human resources, as well as other staff uh, from QACPS. So we would like to welcome you this evening uh, to a little bit of a budget overview, uh, just to give you some background and, and kind of context. Uh, but really tonight is about the purpose of seeking public input and, and public feedback. Uh, as Captain Kelly mentioned uh, just a few moments ago. So this is really the last of, of three sessions that, that we began engaging the public as we start this uh, process. So tonight, and our whole purpose is really to seek that feedback. We st we've started with our schools in this process, in the budget process. Uh, the role of the superintendent is to be able to provide a recommendation uh, to the Board of Education by February. So we have a lot of work to do in the month of December and the month of January in order to do that. And then we'll actually uh, go to the county commissioners uh, in the month of March and then seek public feedback as well in April as they seek uh, as part of their budget process. And as we get in May and then by the end of June to finalize our budget to start the next, the next fiscal year, which will start July 1st, 2017, which will be our fiscal year uh, 2018 process. So this is the beginning. We've got some exciting things that we've done uh, that will kick off this year in seeking public feedback. But first, what is it that we actually do as a school system? What we do and what we do well is that we make learning so exciting for our youngest learners that they turn into global graduates that have successful careers. That's what we do as a public school, as a public school institution. We're in the business of teaching and learning. And there's really another way to actually look at this. And in any organization, it's about productivity equals output divided by input. And as a school system, we're actually no different. 
But our context is a little different in the fact that our productivity is about teaching and learning. Right? That's what we do day in and day out. That's our full-time responsibility. Our output is to ensure that all of our students graduate on time, not only college ready, career ready, but also civic ready. And that's got to be divided by the input. And that's what really is the context of this evening. And that is about all the resources that we use in the school system to educate all students effectively. That's why every piece of paper, every um, person in our school system, every resource is mission critical to provide the highest quality of education to all of our students day in and day out. That's our core function of what we do as a school system. And in Queen Anne's County, we're very, very fortunate uh, geographically, not only of where we live, but one of the greatest things about Queen Anne's County is its diversity. It's diverse from Kent Island all the way up here to the north. So having 14 schools, eight elementary schools, four middle schools, two high schools, one alternative center, uh, makes us very unique and geographically how our schools are actually spread out through the county. We have uh, over just over 1,200 full-time and part-time employees. Uh, we're responsible for over 1.5 million square feet that we're responsible for maintaining, we're responsible for uh, cleaning. Uh, by in one year's time, our students travel, or our buses rather, travel nearly a million miles in one year over 77 buses. So that is a lot when you talk about day-to-day -day operations of a functioning school system. There's a lot of responsibility to make sure everything's moving in the same direction. And that's certainly my responsibility is to understand the needs of the school system and then be able to make a recommendation to our Board of Education on the needs of our school system. But a little bit of a context uh, about our funding, and that is a little bit around wealth per pupil. And what's interesting about this is how wealth is actually determined and how where Queen Anne's County actually ranks. So what you'll notice in this graph are the bars that are in green represent the Eastern Shore counties. And then as you can see, uh, Queen Anne's County is there in red. But this is very significant because this tells the picture about our funding source uh, in Queen Anne's County. So wealth per capita. So how we determine wealth is property tax, uh, personal, um, personal property tax, income tax, divided by the number of students. So currently this year, our November 30th was 7,751 students. So they take those numbers and divide that and to be able to come up with a wealth per pupil uh, number. So what's interesting about this is that the higher wealth that you are as a jurisdiction, the lower the number of the state funding that you receive. So the lower the wealth, the higher the state funding would be. So you can see we rank uh, seventh in the state of our wealth. And so that's a good thing, but it's also uh, a challenge when it comes to state funding. Our per pupil funding, and you'll notice this, it's very similar in green eastern shore counties, but look where Queen Anne's County ranks in per pupil funding. So a little over $13,000. So most of our funding, uh, just about 56% of that, comes from local funding. It actually comes from the commissioners, comes from our tax base here in Queen Anne's County. About 36% of that comes from state funding, 5% comes from federal funding, and about 1% becomes in, in other various uh, uh, avenues. But you'll notice that in the 13,000 where we rank about how much we're spending uh, per student. So just looking at this graph and saying the state average, which is there in yellow, a little over four, almost $15,000, if we were just getting the, the uh, state average, we'd be receiving nearly $11 million more in our budget. So something to keep in mind and certainly the context. Maintenance of effort uh, in our county funding formula that each year our county has to fund uh, our per pupil as it was in years past. So as we look at our current enrollment of 7,751 students, one of the things that's unique about that is that in the state funding formula, you, you can't uh, add the students that are in pre-K. So we have around 229 students that are in pre-K. So in our local funding, you can see that that's a little over $7,000 per student. But we still have those 229 pre-kindergarten students that were responsible for educating. So if we would receive that funding, it would be another $2 million that we receive. We don't receive that, 
but we still have to educate the children that come to us. So that's a very important little part of the context of really understanding a little bit of the big picture. Uh, now as we start to kind of drill down, where do we spend our money? Well, in any organization, the largest portion of where you spend your dollars is in people. And that's no different in a school system as well. As you can see, that nearly a little over 60% of that is spent in people and in benefits. So when you look at almost about 86% of what we spend is really in people, and then when you get into really contracts is the next largest one. So when we look at transportation and special education needs, just getting students to school and from school makes up a larger portion of our budget. If we drill that down just a little bit further and actually look at where we spend it, not only which breaks it down to administration, which is the top level administration, uh, but the primary driver of that is in, in any school system or your teaching force. So with that is also the supports that have to be wraparound support services to students. So we spend nearly about 90% of our budget on getting kids to school, educating them with a high quality teacher, supporting them with wraparound services, and getting them back home safely each and every day is the bulk of where we spend our money. So that's important to understand in that the majority of our funds goes directly to children and supporting children on a daily basis. We've had a lot of factors in Queen Anne's County that have led to our success. Uh, in any school system, and it's no doubt that we've been historically, leads to one primary factor that leads to that success, and that has to be the classroom teacher. There's nothing that closes the achievement gap that increases student achievement more than the classroom teacher. What they do each and every day in those four walls with your children, with our children, is what makes the biggest difference. And we've seen that. With that has also been a significant focus on the reduction of class size. So smaller class sizes, which research tells us that our teacher is able to meet those individual needs of, of students better when you have a lower class size. Our professional development, uh, our increase in technology over the years, the use of data, even though we've changed in a new measurement, have all been factors that have led to our success. But in any organization, there are always challenges. And our greatest challenge as a school system is our achievement gap. We, we still have disparities among African American students, uh, students of poverty, our English language learners, um, our special education students, where we've seen some significant gaps. And that has to be our main focus as a school system. With that is ensuring equality, equity, and certainly diversity. And we've begun this work around race relations as well. That also plays a factor into that. But that's a key driver in looking at our greatest needs as a school system. This past spring, we had a curriculum management audit that looked at five areas of our school system, looked at governance and leadership, looked at our curriculum, looked at equity, how well kids are moving into our system. Uh, to how well they're graduating. Uh, it's actually looking at our assessment system and actually looked at our budget system as well. How well are we using the resources that we have to our bottom line of increasing student achievement? So that's gave, that's gave us a lot of great insight into our needs as an organization. But we've talked about the achievement gap. You have to target where it starts. And that is early learning and school readiness. What we found is our achievement gap starts in the middle of pre-kindergarten. We know, our data tells us, that nearly 50% of our students that enter kindergarten aren't ready to do kindergarten level work. 100% of our students that come from Head Start aren't ready to do kindergarten level work. Although we're, we're entering into our third year of our park assessment, which is new, our recent results tell us that 60% of our students by the end of grade three aren't ready to read on that level. 50% of our students in grade three aren't ready to do mathematics at that level. So what that tells us is we have to have a focus on early learning, and that is a big significant need for us as an organization, as a school system. Our dual credit programs, as, as students articulate into higher education, into their careers, we see that as a need as well. We also see a high need of our collective bargaining, uh, our employees as well, and our agreements, and certainly our capital requests. We talked about our 1.5 million square feet that we're responsible for. So it's important that we keep, keep up with the maintenance uh, of our organization to keep it in a very healthy learning environment. 
What we've spent a lot of time in the last year is really aligning our organization to our strategic plan. And that's about increasing the academic excellence, focusing on safe and uh, secure schools, uh, high quality workforce, and organizational effectiveness. And with that, this year we've launched our QACPS Innovation Center, which is really our response to our curriculum management audit. That we believe by focusing on these five key drivers, organizational effectiveness, early learning and school readiness, curriculum instructional tools, such as technology, the devices that we put in the hands, the presentation that was done earlier, and assessment, all those have to be in strong alignment with one another, as well as looking at professional development, not only for our teachers, but for all of our employees, as well as leadership. How are we developing the next level of leaders in Queen Anne's County Public Schools? And last but not least is how we monitor progress and performance of our children. How are children doing as they go through the year? How do we need to make adjustments, realignments of resources to meet individual needs? So how can you help? And tonight we thank you for being here because tonight is an opportunity for you to share and give us feedback. But one of the first things that you can do is certainly lend your support uh, uh, to our county commissioners that have been great supporters of our public school system, have met over a million dollars last year over our maintenance of effort. They've been great partners. They've been great supporters of our public school system. Uh, second is to really connect with your local school, with your principal. Uh, help in understanding what the needs of the school, what you think the needs of the school are. Uh, certainly in having conversations with our Board of Education members. Uh, are all critical elements that you can share uh, your thoughts, your feelings. But if you can't, there's also another avenue, which is the first year, this is the first year we've done a survey. Uh, so folks that can't attend our forums have an opportunity online to take a very quick survey to give us some feedback and insight as to what you think our greatest needs are as an organization, as a school, as a classroom, and as a community. Where can you find more information? Certainly there's a lot of information around our budget, our budget process uh, on our webpage. Uh, you'll see it right there on the right hand side. Uh, we thank you so much for being here this evening and giving you an opportunity. And at this point we're gonna transition into our public forum. So if you've had an opportunity to uh, sign up, we're gonna call your name, you can come up and then you'll have three minutes to express uh, your needs, interests, or concerns as we relate to building the, our fiscal year 18 budget. I thank you for coming out tonight, and I look forward to listening to your ideas. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Karen Fields. I'm the president of Queen Anne's County Education Association. And I would just like to stress that when we work on the budget, that educators and support staff are a priority and that they remain a priority, that we look forward to beginning the negotiation process. And we hope that it's brief and productive. And uh, Mr. Paluski was talking about the importance of um, classroom teachers and I would like to emphasize that um, when it comes to adding personnel please consider um, how that affects the classroom first I can give you an example in my own school um, I teach at Centerville Middle School uh, we have pure teams almost throughout the school except for one grade level it makes a huge difference if you teach in content and if all the teachers teach the same students in the grade level because that way you've really wrapped around the student and they are your focus and just like we say to our students collaboration is the best way and that's true with teachers and their teaching so um, I just wanted to share that I appreciate the time and I look forward to starting our negotiations and that we continue as a united front um, when we meet the commissioners Um, the way that it works in my school, you have um, one side teaches all the subjects, then you have the other side that teaches all the subjects. But for our particular sixth grade, there's some teachers that have to teach out of content, so it's not great for them, and then you don't always have the same students. 
um, so you're not always talking about those students. If you all teach the same students, then they are your priority. And what's great about that is that you might know something in fifth period that works for this child that you can share with the teacher who's in third period. So it's, it's the best part of collaboration. Thank you. We really don't have anyone else on the list, but I really encourage anyone who'd like to come up. You don't have to be on the list to come up. And you don't have to have a written speech either. <laughs> okay. Sure, Mr. Kenna. My name is Sean Kent. I'm the principal here at Southernsville Middle School. You guys uh, have a copy of my budget, and I just wanted to say, for the record, um, I recognize that a lot of times big initiatives in the school system take time to phase money-wise the full way in. There's a great program in our school system that started a long time ago when I was at Stevensville called Gateway Technology. Uh, it has computer science, it has engineering, it has all great things that not only give kids those experiences but also retrains how their minds work to be better, pro better problem solvers. Um, as I said, it started at Stevensville years ago, expanded to Mattapeak and Centerville. You guys have it in my budget request for uh, us to be the final middle school to get that position. I realize that's a big piece. I understand budget process. And I know that we're talking about a, you know, probably eighty or ninety thousand dollar line on the item to add a teacher for that program. Um, but I'm just here to advocate for the students in my school. Um, I'm not angry that we don't have it. I understand it's one step at a time, but we are the last step, and I hope that you will give very strong consideration to making that last step a complete program here at our school. Thank you. Please. Hi, my name is Denise Crowsley. Um, I live right on 300 outside of Sellersville. I have a sixth grader here at the middle school, a fourth grader at the elementary school. And my concern for our community with the school is um, on the school buses. I'd like to see if you could propose in your budget um, for the cameras on the stop signs because we have a really, really bad problem in not only in Sellersville, I know in Centerville as well, people are just running the stop, um, the bus stops. It's it's madness. Um, we had a tractor trailer that was reported to the Board of Ed, I believe, a couple weeks ago. Um, but that's not the only occurrence. It's two to three times a week. Um, I actually, they have to cross the road at 5.30 when they get off the PFY bus. It's dark. Um, and people just aren't stopping. They don't care. You know, the red lights are flashing. And I have to stand in the middle of the road with my hand out, you know. And they're still trying to run me down. You know, these are my kids. I want them to reach graduation. I don't want them to be sprawled out in the middle of the road because somebody's in a hurry. So if you could just think about that in your budget, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Um, on the, um, since you have else, anyone else? On the um, budget, just be aware we're, the, all the indicators are that we're not going to get any more than our, our maintenance of effort. So maintenance efforts is the amount of money basically that we got last year uh, unless we get extra students as of September 30th. And it looks like we've only got one extra student as of September 30th. So we're pretty much getting the same budget we had last year. So when we want to go ahead and give, compensate the teachers for more, uh, you know, a little, a step or a, a percentage, it's very difficult when you're sitting there with a flat line budget from what you had before. The other item is for new initiatives, um, we, you know, we do a lot of analysis of our budget as to what is required. We are a public school, and when we ran into problems back um, years ago, we had to cut four and a half million dollars out of just the basic maintenance of effort. We had to get rid of some of those enrichment programs, which it seems kind of, we're a public school, so we had to meet the, low, the need for all the kids, and in particular had to meet the need for for even the, the ones that are having more difficulties in particular, because that's our requirement as a public school. For the high-flying kids that, you know, we, had, we have enrichment programs for, um, we had to cut back on those programs. I don't like doing that because those kids deserve as much attention, but I think the philosophy on the public school issue is if they're high flyers, then they should be picked up in other programs and parents should push them to those other programs. The problem with that is another problem, is maybe parents can't afford to, to send their kids to these high programs if they're high flyers, but there's quite a few parents that can't afford that.
And so we've got these students that are potentially going to run our country one day. They're going to take care of me in my old age. Uh, you know, they're going to do miraculous things for our country. And we can't give them that extra boost because as a public school, where we have to make choices whether to fund those programs or not. The Gateway program is an awesome program. Um, I saw it when I first got on the board at Stevensville, and then I see it, it went to Madden Peak, like you said, and then we were able last year, I believe it was, to, to move it to Centerville. That is to also is unfair that we're not give, giving the same benefit to the students at Somersville Middle. So I don't want to be um, penalizing a, a, your school here in Sellersville if we can at all help it. But I just want you to understand the whole picture of what we're facing. The solution to this is we're going to do a lot of scrutiny on our budget as we try to do each year. And we need to have, probably we need to have more than maintenance of effort. There's no doubt in my mind. And that's where Mrs. Fields was saying we're going to try to be, collaborate with the union. She's president of the union if you don't understand what the um, association is. And, and they represent the staff, they represent the teachers. So we need to work together to get the budget passed through the, to the commissioners. And the third and most vital piece of that whole collaboration is the parents. And believe me, all these times I've, I've briefed the commissioners and gone to their meetings and begged for money, the, the ones they listen to the most are the parents. And they listen to the largest number of people that come to these hearings. That's key. They're humans. And if they start hearing from tons of parents that they're unhappy, that's when they start listening. So I encourage you, not only as teachers and ministers, but as parents also, listen up to when we have these budget hearings. Go toward to the, to the commissioners. They meet in all areas of the county, and they advertise it. And that's your opportunity to come and speak for us. The greater the number, the more successful we're going to have, guaranteed. So my job, our job, is to make sure that budget is right, that it's as, it's as robust as we believe it should be, and yet as lean as we are, as, as we can be to be mindful of the limited money the commissioners have. We kind of do a balance on that. And it's your job is to help us get this passed by the commissioners and get any additional monies we feel important. So please keep that in mind and please pass that to your friends and your you know, other parents um, that are around. I know we have some parents here. So that's why it's important that you all have the input, input to the commissioners. Okay, does anyone have any questions on how the process works? It's a little complicated, but if you just think about helping get what you think we need for our students, then then it's not as complicated. And, and we'll try to make sure you understand what it is we're asking for and why as a board. Okay? Thank you. Okay, I think that's the end of the hearing. If you all would like to come and talk to me after we operate, we did want to get on the QAC TV. I'd be glad to, to listen to you. Thank you.